Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to part 9 of Creating Snake in Java. Now, in all of the previous tutorials, we've created an essentially working snake game. Um, there, there have been problems with our snake game throughout the tutorials, however, we have fixed them. And right now, we're working with something that runs fairly smooth, keeps track of high score, keeps track of fruit, and other stuff. Now, we're pretty much almost done with our game. There are just a few final adjustments that we need to make. And one of which is we actually need to make a menu. So in order to make a menu, what we're going to do is we're simply going to create a menu image um, that has that says something like press enter to continue so the user can actually start the game by pressing a key. And um, once the user presses enter, it jumps right to the game. So um, in this tutorial, we'll actually be... I've already created that image in Microsoft Paint uh, about 10 minutes ago. And we're just going to be taking that image and putting it into the game as a menu. Now hopefully you're going to be able to create something a little better than my menu, but you'll see that in a second. Now one thing we also need to do is a user on, um, I think it was last part of the video tutorials, actually posted out that we have a, or pointed out that we have a small memory leak in our program. So we can go ahead and fix this, and I'll just kill myself now. Uh, my name is Brandon, thank you very much. New high score. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've already highlighted, or I've already centered um, the screen on the point where the memory leak is, and that is our paint method. So how our paint method works is every so often it's recalled, and it simply clears the screen and then uses this code to draw everything onto it. Now, since we couldn't get the init method working properly, we also put all of the program's initialization methods, all of these, inside of the paint method. Now. As you can see, all of these have um, little checks to make sure that this is the first run of the program. However, we also have these small initializers that are not checked. So every time the program is repainting, we're actually resetting the size and then we're adding um, our key listener. So that's a little inefficient because when the program has already started and everything's already working, we're still setting these things that are already set. So what we can do is we can go ahead and move these things down into a section of the code to make sure they only work when the program is first started. So I'm going to press Control X to cut the code, and then I'm going to pop it right here in this empty space in if run thread equals equals null. And that is because this is the one thing that checks to see if the program is started, and if it hasn't started, start it. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those into there, and then if we run the program, uh, we shouldn't notice any difference, but we should notice that everything is still working, which is always a good sign. So now that we fixed that small memory leak, um, we're going to go ahead and exit out of our application and begin working on our menu. Now I've actually already made my menu, and keep in mind that when you make your menu, you need to make it the same size as, um, as your application, and our applet is actually 640 by 480 pixels. So in Microsoft Paint, you can click on this little thing up at the top, press Properties, and then you can change the canvas size um, accordingly. So we've got 640 by 480 pixels. And I made this uh, cheesy little menu using a small line gradient color thingy, my bob, and the Battlefield 3 font. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's, it's a small menu and it does the job well. So I actually went ahead and saved this menu to my desktop so we can begin working on it right away. So once you've actually created your menu and saved it to wherever, the first step to actually using your menu image is importing it into your project. And this can be done by right-clicking on your project's default package and pressing Import. And then you're just going to want to double-click on File System because you want to import a file from the file system. Click on Browse and locate your file, or locate the directory of your file. Mine is on the desktop, and then you press OK. And then you find your file inside of the right box. So here's Snake Menu. I'm just going to check it and then press finish. And as you can see, Snake Menu is now inside of our source folder. Now this will prevent the program from automatically deleting the image every time everything is rebuilt and will actually save the program as a resource uh, or save the image as a resource of the program. So this makes everything easier. So now that we've actually got that image imported, let's go ahead and begin loading it in. So the first thing we need to do is actually make a menu work. So the way the, men the menu is going to work is it's just going to show up with a screen that says press enter to continue. And then um, once, once we actually say press enter to continue, or once the little screen pops up, uh, we don't want anything else to happen until um, the enter key is actually pressed. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a Boolean variable to keep track of all that. So we're going to say uh, private Boolean is in menu. And we're just going to set that equal to true to start things off. So while in, is in menu is true, only the menu is going to be displayed and nothing else is going to work. Now by default we have this set to true because every time the game is started we want the menu to appear. Now this is where we actually get to begin drawing our menu. So the paint method is something that's recalled every time the game cycles through, right? So what we want to do is inside of the paint method, every time or if the boolean is in menu is true, then we simply only want to draw um, the is in menu stuff or the menu stuff. If is in menu is false, then we want to draw everything else. So we're just going to say if is in menu. Now that is actually synonymous with saying if is in menu equals equals true. However, we can actually leave out the equals equals true because it's simply checking the boolean is in menu. And then we can go ahead and say else. Whoops, those are not curly brackets. Else. So if we're actually in the menu, then what we want to do is we want to draw the menu. However, if we're not in the menu, we want to draw everything else. So right now, we can actually move everything else right into there. So the first thing we might notice that we need to move into there is the drawing stuff. So we're just going to pop that down into the bottom of our else. Now we've got three if statements here. We need to figure out which ones are not necessary for actually running the game and actually make the game work. Now this one actually initializes the game by placing the snake and placing the fruit. So that is something that we don't need to run while the menu is running. So we can pop that right into there. This one, if run thread equals null, then what we're going to do is we're actually initializing the game here. Um, we're actually starting the, the game, we're starting the dimensions, we're setting the key listener, and we're starting our loop. Now since this is actually initializing everything about the game, this, wants, this is going to be something that needs to run no matter if we're in the menu or if we're not in the menu. So we're going to go ahead and cut that with control X and then we can put it in if is in menu or if is not in menu. Now in order to actually simplify things we can go ahead and cut it out and simply put it on top of the if statement. So this is something that needs to run whether or not we are actually inside of the menu. Now finally we have the high score which is something that does not need to run while we're simply viewing the menu. So we could put this in the area where we're not inside of the menu. So now our paint method has been restructured to actually um, contain two sets of data. Things to do when the menu is not being displayed and things to do when the menu is being displayed. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually make a method that draws the menu. So we're going to say public void draw menu and we're going to go ahead and take a graphics of course. Now inside this draw menu method what we need to do is we actually need to load the image from the file system and then we actually need to draw it onto the screen. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and get an image. So um, this can be done by using a URL and a get default toolkit method. Now this was actually covered in I think part 25 of my Java tutorial series uh, which is loading and displaying images. However I'm actually going to go ahead and do it here. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get the image. So we're going to say image um, menu image and we're going to go ahead and set that equal to null. Now what we want to do is we want to actually make a try catch block here and this try catch block will actually catch if the image is not found or if there's an error with it. So right now we have a menu image and we need to actually load our image into the menu image. So the first thing we need to do is create a URL and the URL variable simply stores the path of where the image is. So we're going to say URL image path equals and then what we need to do is we actually need to access our class variables. So we could say this dot class no bad. We could say snake canvas dot class dot get resource and then we can go ahead and type in the resource name. So the name is actually going to be our snake menu dot png. So what this will do is it's actually going to get the information about the resource and um, actually input it into our URL variable. Now we're just going to go ahead and import the URL here and keep in mind that this is going to be the URL in java.net um, not in java.docs flavor or whatever that was. 
So now that we actually have the URL variable, we can go ahead and actually set our menu image. So now we can say menu image equals, and we simply need to extract the image from the URL variable. This could be done using our get default toolkit. So we can say toolkit dot get default uh, default toolkit dot get image and then what we're just going to go ahead and do is send an image path the URL and then we are going to add a semicolon now it's going to have us import toolkit so once we do that uh, we should be free of errors and then once we're actually done with this menu image uh, we can go ahead and use it however if an error actually occurs then we're just going to say e dot print stack trace um, now this error would occur usually if the image does not exist on the on the hard drive but that is not the case here so we'll just not even mess with that right now so now that we've got an image um, to actually work with we can go ahead and draw it right onto the screen and this can be done by simply saying g dot draw image and then we're going to draw our image menu image and we're going to locate it of course at zero zero and it's going to be stress stretching um, from 600 or to 640, 480, and then the image observer is of course going to be the thing that's drawing it, and this canvas is actually drawing it, so the image observer is going to be this. So in recap, all we did in the draw menu um, thing is we actually went ahead and created a menu image resource. We set it equal to null, and then we went ahead and loaded it from the file system. Now one problem that I foresee with this, actually, is that since the draw menu uh, method is going to be called every time it's painted, we're actually going to be loading the file from the file system every time the thing is repainted. And that's a problem because that will use unnecessary resources and unnecessary hard, drive, hard disk access. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and create a global resource that keeps track of our menu image. So we're going to go ahead and say private image menu image. And this is just going to be a global resource that we're going to load inside of the draw menu. So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to null to begin with. And inside the draw menu method, we're just going to go ahead and say if um, this dot menu image equals null, then we are going to go ahead and load it using this try catch block. However, if it's not null and once it's already loaded, then we're just going to go ahead and draw it onto the screen. So in theory, um, once we set this dot menu image equal to our image, um, this block should no longer be called, and then we should be able to draw the image straight off. So now we have this paint method. If is in menu, draw menu, we're just going to go ahead and put in the draw menu method. So if we actually, oh, and we need to send in our graphics G. My bad. So, so now if we actually run the program and press OK, you can see that when things start off, um, it actually draws the menu instead of actually starting the game. And we also get a null pointer exception. So let's go ahead and check this out. So our null pointer exception is actually called in the move method. Um, and that's simply because what we do in our paint method is once everything's started, we start our run thread. So this actually activates the run method and begins it. So what we do in the run method is we simply move and then we repaint. However, we cannot move if we're in the menu, right? So we're going to go ahead and say if um, not is in menu, then we're going to go ahead and move. So this should make it so every time we're not in the menu, we're moving. And that should eliminate the error that we just encountered. However, we're always going to want to repaint the screen. So the final thing we actually need to do with this menu is, as you can see here, it says press enter to continue. But when we press enter, nothing happens. Well, what we need to do is we actually need to make a key, a case for this in our method um, that detects all of our keystrokes in the key pressed method. So what we can go ahead and do is we can set up a new case. And we could say case key event dot VK enter. And so what we need to do in the VK enter case is if we're currently in the menu, then we need to say that we're not in the menu. So we're just going to go ahead and say if is in menu well then we can say is in menu equals false so we're simply setting the menu variable to false and then we're going to go ahead and break out of that and then once we set the menu variable equal to false well inside of our paint method it's now going to call all of the game logic and inside of our run method it's now going to make the snake move 
So we can go ahead and test this out by pressing run and we get this cool little menu and then we're going to go ahead and press enter to continue. But as you can see here, we still get an error when uh, we press enter to continue. And that is because the move method is called, but um, none of the things are actually initialized. So we can go ahead and, um, oh, actually, the error with this is because in our run method, what we're doing is we're calling move before we call repaint. And um, the reason this is calling an error is because everything is actually initialized within the repaint method. So what we can do is um, inside of our key pressed method where we actually detect the key press is when we set is in menu equal to false we're going to go ahead and have the screen repaint itself and this is just going to cause everything to initialize everything and the loop to begin working as properly this will also make give the user immediate feedback so instead of waiting for the loop to go after they press enter it will go immediately after they press enter so now we can actually run the application and if we press enter the game starts And voila, we have successfully created an introduction menu. Now, currently, there's no way to actually get back to this menu. However, it would be extremely simple to implement. Why? Because we have this is in menu variable that will actually allow us to go right back to the menu. So, for example, if you wanted to make it so once you pressed escape, it jumped right back to the menu, you can make it say case. You can make a new case in the key pressed and say case key event dot vk escape. And then when this is called, you simply set is in menu equal to true. And then you're going to break. So if we go ahead and run this application, you press enter to go jump into the game. And there's actually an error, of course. Um, so it looks like that there's an error with the move method again. And I believe that this is just because it happened to be that the loop um, the loops move method was called before the enter keys repaint method was called. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and um, re move repaint on top of the, the move method. And this should solve all of the errors that we're getting. So now if we go ahead and run the snake applet and we press enter, um, you can see that everything works just as it did. And now if we press enter, you can see that, or escape rather, you can see that it jumps right back um, into the the menu, and then if we press enter again, it continues right where we left off. Now, why does it continue right where we left off? Well, when we set the is the is in menu variable equal to false, essentially what it does is instead of actually doing any game logic, it simply just draws to the screen the menu. So, since it's not doing any game logic, we're preserving the state of all the variables and objects that we're using to draw the game. So, this escape button can now function as a pause button. If we press here, we can press enter, and we'll still there when we resume. So now the final thing that we really need to do with this video game to make it complete is we need to add two things. First of all, we need to make a little menu that when you die, it doesn't just jump you back to the start, but it says something like, you died, your score was, the high score is, etc. And we also need to make it so you can actually win the game. Because if you've actually won at Snake, the way you win is you actually fill up every single box with your Snake self. That's so your Snake is so large that it's con like the whole grid contains it. So in the next tutorial, we will be adding an end-of-game screen, and we'll actually be adjusting for if the player actually wins, which we haven't been able to do yet. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to actually add a menu to the screen. In this tutorial, we created a quick introduction menu by loading an image and drawing it and creating an isInMenu Boolean variable. And we actually were able to use that to create a pause menu, like so. So thanks very much for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And have a fantastic day. I'm going to have to talk to you guys later. Peace.